What's on the horizon this time? You wouldn't even know what it is. Oh yeah? What about a bunch of vegetables and rice? Wait, how'd you- I saw all the containers of veggies and rice in the fridge. Oh. It's stuff to make bibimbap. Ah, bibimbap, right. Cause I know what that means. It's just a mixed rice bowl, dude. Then just call it that. That's literally what bibimbap means. Do you even know what country it's from? Um, Canada? Wrong answer. Bibimbap is undoubtedly one of Korea's most popular dishes and for good reason. Bibim meaning mix and bap meaning rice. This is just a really flavorful rice bowl. And I'm going to be making all the elements of this from scratch, but that's not how Koreans do it. They always have a bunch of banchan or Korean side dishes in their refrigerator to eat throughout the week. And sometimes they utilize them in bibimbap by just tossing them into a rice bowl. But I'm not Korean, so I'm just going to take you through making all this from scratch. I'm going to start by marinating my protein, which I chose ground pork for this. Ground beef or steak also work really well but this is just what I have. I'm doing a very simple bulgogi style marinade by adding two tablespoons of soy sauce, one teaspoon of sesame oil, a couple of cloves of minced garlic, a tablespoon of corn syrup, and a canister of this applesauce. You could use blended up Korean pear instead but this is just the hack that I use. Finally a good few cranks of black pepper and then mix this all around. That only needs to marinate for like 30 minutes or so or however long it takes us to prep everything else. And that starts with blanching a couple vegetables here. I have a 10 ounce bag of spinach. I'm throwing it into a pot of boiling water for about 20 seconds just to let it wilt down. Then I'll transfer it over into a bowl of ice water to shock it and keep the color green. I'm going to come right behind that spinach and add about a pound of bean sprouts. You can skip these if you don't like them. This is really just a rice bowl that you can customize to make however you want. I'm boiling these for five minutes to get them a little bit softened, but just not too soft. I'll strain those out and then I'm gonna season everything. Once I squeeze all the excess water out the spinach, I'm gonna ball it up and then just chop it into quarters. This will reduce the chance of getting any long stringy pieces when you're eating. To season the spinach, I have a clove of garlic that I'm pressing in, maybe a tablespoon of soy sauce and a teaspoon of sesame oil, and then just some sesame seeds for garnish. I get all that coated and this is very similar to a shigumchi namur, which is my favorite Korean side dish. It's gonna go great with the bibimbap. For the bean sprouts, I'm seasoning with a tablespoon of soy sauce and then about a tablespoon of fish sauce. That extra sourness is nice. And then just a teaspoon of sesame oil. Just toss those and set aside. Those are just gonna get added like this to the top of the bowl. Most of the rest of the veggies are gonna get julienned or cut into matchsticks like this. I'm starting with one of these large carrots that I buy at my Korean market. If you buy regular supermarket ones, you probably want to use two of them. I peel that and then chunk it down into a few more reasonably sized pieces. I'm going to do the same thing with one zucchini and one cucumber. Just cutting them down to where when I julienne them, they're going to be a reasonable sized piece to eat. You could cut these into matchsticks by hand, but that's a little tedious, so I have one of these mandolins that has julienne blades on it. And an added bonus, you don't have to slide your hands across this one. I'll link it below. I just hold them firmly against the blade and then keep chopping down until I get these perfect julienne slices. You gotta play with the distance of the blade a bit to make sure they're not too thin like my zucchini slices were. Then I'll take those three veggies and put them into their individual bowls. I'm gonna salt these to get them internally seasoned and a bit tenderized. The carrot and zucchini are gonna be stir fried later, but the cucumber is gonna stay raw. So in addition to the salt I'm adding to that, I'm also gonna add some rice vinegar to make it kind of salad-like. This stuff is just good to eat on its own, by the way. I also have about 150 grams of fresh shiitake mushrooms. Normally these are easy to find dried, but I like to use fresh ones for something like this. If you can't find fresh shiitake, you can use pretty much any fresh mushroom. I'm just taking the stems off and then cutting them into decently thin slices. Lastly, I have four scallions that I'm just gonna slice down really thinly. I'll use the greens for garlic garnish but I'll take the whites and add them to the marinating pork to be stir fried later. And a good bibimbap is not good without the gochujang sauce. It's going to bring all the individual flavors together in a sweet and spicy fusion. To a bowl, I'll quickly add 4 tablespoons of gochujang, optionally a little spoonful of dwinjang if you have it, I just wanted to add it here. A tablespoon of rice vinegar, 2 teaspoons of soy sauce, 1 teaspoon of sesame oil, a couple tablespoons of brown sugar and 1 clove of minced garlic, and then 1 tablespoon of mirin and then just mix all that together. Now that we've got all our mise en place, it's time to throw this together which is really quick. I'm using my carbon steel wok which is one of my favorite things to cook in. I'm getting that over a high heat and then I'm forgetting to start with the pork and I'm starting with some oil and then my shiitake mushrooms. Those get sauteed until they reduce a bit and they're brown all around just a few minutes. I'm going to season with a couple teaspoons of soy sauce and then one clove of minced garlic. Just toss all that around one more time until it's even and you can set those aside. You should start with the pork so that it flavors everything else with the fond it develops on the bottom but that's okay. The pork goes in with a little bit of oil and then I just try to press that into the bottom of the wok. I want some really nice browning in this and I want the excess water inside to evaporate. So just make sure you break that up and stir it around over the course of 5-7 to seven minutes until it's cooked through. Remember to take this past the point of being cooked through and let it get some browning on the outside. 
That browning really doesn't start until the water from inside evaporates, so take your time here. But once you get to that point, you can set this aside. Korean stir fries commonly stir fry one ingredient at a time and take it out before the next one goes in. You see that in japchae if you've ever had that. It allows the cook to make sure that each element is perfectly cooked on its own. So I'm going to go in next with my carrot. Just make sure you pour off that excess moisture that came out with the salt. This only needs about two minutes of tossing. You're just trying to get some softening around it and a little bit of browning. Then I take that out and finish up with the zucchini. And the last element I want to make is the crispy fried egg to go on top, which is pretty simple. I just get a good bit of oil into a small saucepan over high heat. Once that's just smoking, I crack my egg in and it'll immediately start to fry. I'm going to try to gather up some of the excess oil with my spoon and pour it over the top to sort of baste it. Otherwise, it might take the egg white that's on top too long to cook before the bottom burns but another good way to cook the top is just to cover this and the steam will come around and cook it more evenly you're basically done when you don't see any more runny white check out how golden and crispy that bottom is it's amazing now all that's left to do is assemble this rice bowl i had some short grain rice cooking in my rice cooker while all this was going on so i'm scooping a bed of that onto the bottom and then adding a generous portion of the pork then some of that spinach, and then the bean sprouts. Make sure to take your time and spread this around to make it look pretty. I'm adding my carrots, zucchini, and mushrooms. Finish with the cucumber and fried egg. Don't forget some heaps of that beautiful gochujang sauce. And then I'm gonna garnish with some furikake or Japanese rice seasoning. A few extra roasted sesame seeds and the scallion greens from earlier. Now this is a protein packed, healthy lunch or dinner or whatever you wanna eat this for. Rice bowls like this are made in many different ways worldwide. I just happen to like this style from Korea because I'm biased. And yeah, like I said, this is traditionally made from leftovers in the fridge just thrown together. But even if you make everything from scratch like I did, it only took me two hours start to finish, which isn't bad. I'm happy with this result and I can't wait to dig into this colorful dish. Let's get to the taste test. This one's a work of art. If somebody brought this to me at a restaurant, I would immediately get hungry. As humans, we love processed food and products that look nothing like what you find in nature, but there's still something so appetizing about a natural looking, healthy vegetable bowl like this. I'm gonna attempt to mix some of this around so I can get an even bite, especially with that sauce. Break the yolk. That should be most of everything. Korean food is so good, man. I just love all these flavors. I can't get enough of them. The only thing that stops me from doing this often is I don't have all this at the ready. I had to make this whole thing from scratch, basically. And like I said, Korean households don't do it like this. They already have all this banchan in their fridge and they just toss it together for a quick meal. I cook too many different styles of food to have my fridge always stocked like that, but still doing this is so worth it. Hmm. It's just so good. I could eat a bunch of this and not feel sick afterwards. Just having everything individually seasoned is so vital to any home cooked meal. You don't have to rely on any one part of the dish to make it, even though this sauce is absolutely amazing. Um, but this video comes at a time when I'm about to head to Korea. When you're watching this, I should be on my way there. So next week's video is going to be another amazing Korean dish, but I've been waiting so long to get back there and I really hope I get to experience it to the max this time. It's just my favorite place to be. I'm so excited. But that's going to do it for me today. I hope I did this dish justice. Thank you all for watching, be blessed, and I'll see you next time.